was really interested in the work they did here and it was one of the few places which was like multidisciplinary because I'm kind of interested in working on the intersection between two areas. So that's why I chose this place specifically. But also when I came for the interviews, when I was trying to decide which grad school to go to, I came to Salt Lake City and it was, it was snowing at that time and it was all just covered in snow and looking gorgeous and I was like, oh, okay, I really like this place. Because my tutor in, the, in China, uh, he, uh, he had uh, the project uh, with the professor here in Utah. So uh, we do the research together so I come here. Well, usually when I went shopping, everyone would ask me like, wait, are you American or like, are you Chinese? So from, usually I would get from Japanese to um, a Mongolian or even like Korean. I was like, well, I, my parents are uh, immigrants in the United States. They immigrated there like 20 years ago. And so I'm American born Chinese. But the fact that they were like, wait, you, isn't all Americans white? And I'm like, no, Amer like America is like a melting pot with, filled with different cultures and they didn't understand that. Um, one of the things, they gave us this really kind of cool packet beforehand that says, you know, these are all the stereotypes that Americans think of Spanish people and these are all the stereotypes that Spanish people will think of you, so. Uh, so I'm not uh, familiar with the, the, the food here, especially, for example, the sandwich or the, the hamburger, yes, maybe. And I, I, I think I, I, maybe I have, I have a, a two or a three meals, maybe that's okay. But anymore, I think it is very, very not, not very good to me. <laughs> like there are pockets in Utah where I feel like um, global culture is so well preserved and even just food, like trying out different kinds of food, it just, yeah, it's just a great experience. It just showed me that Utah is not as diverse as other big cities. And the students that come here, they're not very aware of maybe American society. And when I asked other students where, like, if they knew where Utah was on the map, and like, not really. And it just showed that Utah, it, it is pretty diverse, but it's not on the same scale. So, you know, when I walk around on the streets and stuff, it's compared to like, compared to India, which is super crowded, and compared to what I've seen on Friends, it's pretty empty. <laughs> I guess that's just something that I've noticed. Uh, the, the building is very, very small. <laughs> Especially in, in Solid City, uh, a lot very tall. Uh, yes, this is uh, a, 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 a different thing uh, says, uh, from my imagine uh, about, about the US. Uh, but I think uh, others uh, is very ima imagined my my imagine because for example the the, the people the pe people friendly and the the, the clean the air quality uh, uh, and also the uh, the convenience uh, uh, convenience the, uh, uh, feeling here so I think it is uh, match my my image yeah <laughs> everything's efficient in Japan um, everything's punctual in Japan. Um, I remember when I went there, we go, uh, we catch a train, and the train would be there instantly, like right on the dot. It was there at 12.57, 12.57 rolled around, train came. Um, the buses were always on time. I still love my country, but his air pollution is, still, is, is, is bad, I think, uh, uh, compared with the US. And the, the, the life quality here is very, uh, high, I think it's higher than, than especially in Beijing. You saw there are so many people. The bus check, the bus check is the the, the 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 traffic is is very heavy. I, other things, you may uh, spend a lot of time uh, to get somewhere. So I think uh, uh, life in the U.S. is more uh, convenient uh, than Beijing. I think. I worked with um, the Global Global Pathways program, which is um, kind of a f a transition program for students um, who might not have very strong English skills who are coming to study at the university. So it kind of helps them to stay on track and to you know, not come here and just get so overwhelmed that they fail their classes or something like that. And also giving them um, kind of a social structure and having events and English practicing clubs and all of that stuff. So I did a little work with them in their orientation and it was fun. It's, it's really great to, I don't know, give back. I kind of felt like I was doing I'm part of three clubs here. 
Um, one's Asian American Student Association, the International Student Council, and then there's one called I Mentor, and that's mentoring international students here. In all groups, we work with international students and domestic students to help them adapt to Utah and American culture and to help them with like basic needs that we already have, like getting a cell phone, starting a bank account. And we help them with all that. We become their friends. We help them with homework. We hang out with them. And we, we just help them through everything while they're here. I am almost finished with my psychology major. And while I was in France, I decided to declare a second major <laughs> and work on social work and stick around the U for a little bit longer. And I mean, I can understand now also the study abroad students that come to the U and, you know, they'll just kind of sit there and talk in their own group in their own language. And a lot of students I've heard and seen it, they'll just kind of be like, well, why aren't they speaking English, blah, blah, blah. And now having lived in Spain, it's kind of like you are just thrown into this language. And if you don't 100 percent understand it, then you're going to kind of naturally fall back and try to get back into that comfort zone until you can progress forward. It made me also realize uh, a lot of things about the U.S. that are good and aren't so good. Um, the not so good things, I guess, is uh, most of my most of my friends I met they they spoke two, three, four, five different languages like fluently, and everyone knows English really well. And they're um, I, it's actually kind of embarrassing. And there's this joke. So what do you call someone who speaks three languages? A polyglot. What do you call someone who speaks two languages? Bilingual. What do you call someone who speaks one language? American. And that's what everybody just knows that Americans don't speak anything other than English. And I mean, there's a reason for it. I mean, I could get in my car and drive 12 hours in any direction and still be speaking English, you know. And for them, it's just not the same. And if you're from Norway, then you better learn another language because there aren't very many Norwegians in the world. And I mean, especially being from Utah, that's always something. I don't know what people think we are here. I mean, we're not aliens. We're not some cult, you know, regular Americans. but. I think people have a perception that Americans are very egocentric. Um, I think we feel that the rest of the world speaks English, so we have no need to learn another language. We kind of expect everybody to baby us. Um, and I want to prove that as Americans, we actually strive to become, you know, multilingual. We strive to experience other cultures. Um, and less of an Americanization effect. So I want to actually be able to speak Mandarin Chinese fluently because personally I speak a dialect called um, Taishanese and also speak Cantonese. So the Mandarin Chinese is a more standard version of Chinese. So I wanted to be able to pick that language up. The thing that I was lucky to have in my second study abroad was that I spoke Spanish or was learning Spanish, you know. So that's a different boundary that you cross when you learn the actual language or you, you just have some, you know, basic knowledge before going in and you make that effort to speak with them instead of just going straight to English. That builds a bond with the people and they're more um, willing to embrace you and show you their culture. So I had local friends. It was really hard for me at first and I didn't speak a lot, but then all of a sudden it just comes to you. And that's why I really appreciate it the learning abroad program, I don't think I would have that ability if I were to have learned it here in the United States. Even if you already have the country in mind, say like, I want to go to Italy or something, then, you know, the semester before, take an Italian class. It's not going to hurt you. It's only going to improve your experience. I felt like I had a pretty good, you know, foundation of Spanish going there that I was going to be okay, but it was, I mean, intense for the first couple of weeks. The language, they speak so quickly. Their accents are so thick. The words they use are different. Um, so I think more than anything, that took the most getting used to. A really cool experience was being able to translate. It might sound a little nerdy, but I people here tell me that I have pretty good Korean and that I could probably translate, but I didn't think I could. And then going there and all the students were relying on me, like taxi rides, go, where to go downtown, and being able to take them, like almost as a tour guide, it was a pretty cool experience. I, at first it was, it was daunting, it was scary, but it was really great in the end. I actually got a lot better than, um, uh, than I thought I would 
than I thought I was going to. Not as much as I would want to, but um, if I was there for a year, I'd probably be almost fluent, but being able to just naturally converse, even if I have to look up a few words here and there, was very, very, com very nice and uh, very exciting. This little girl named Sophie was only two years old, and she was actually my Spanish teacher, basically, because if I'd said something in Spanish, she'd laugh at me and tell me I was saying it wrong, and so she actually was like the toughest critic ever. But it was really helpful because it taught me Spanish better from a two-year-old, so I felt like a toddler. Like, for instance, you couldn't necessarily go buy a book on it, you know, so, so my language teacher didn't have like a Romanian book to teach me out of, necessarily. Um, people don't learn, it sounds bad to say, but people don't really want to learn Romanian usually. Um, it's just now that people are starting to even go back, start going to that country for any other reason besides business. You know, people are just starting to realize that it's a gorgeous country, it's untouched, you know, you know the people are hospitable. Um, so me learning the language was a first for me and it was a first for the teacher who was teaching me. She'd never taught anyone Romanian before. Um, but that, I think that's, I think that's really important in any place you go. Like you should never, I, I don't think you should ever just go to a country and just hope you can get around with English. Um, learning the language itself, you know, broadens your mind and is, I, I think it's good for you as a person. And it makes you really excited. Usually after you learn a language, you're just so excited to go to that country and start practicing and learning it, so. I do a lot of um, after school help with, I did like at Washington Elementary and I've started doing it at Benyon Elementary. And I think, like I said, I felt like a kindergartner when I was in Ecuador because my Spanish was like not great. And seeing the struggles that they're going through to try to learn English is really scary and I, I admire them so much. And so I, I've been really trying to keep up with it and not that I fully understand their situation, but I kind of like have a taste of what they're going through. Because even though I was only there for a month, it w it, there were times when I was just frustrated because people would be talking to me and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying, so I'm just going to nod my head. So um, I think it also reinforced like, the importance of like, helping students who are learning another language. So I've been trying really to stay with that community because I want to help them like, be supportive like I was supported in Ecuador. Really, I guess like recognizing that and recognizing how language barriers are also, you know, creating enormous amounts of barriers for people, especially in access to healthcare and that sort of thing. So as I began to learn more about Spanish and to learn more about medicine and that sort of thing, I began to really see that I could, you know, I could be a physician eventually um, through my studies and everything that could reach out to a community that honestly um, doesn't receive as much care as they could and as they should.